Hello, biology students, and welcome back to another audio recording. Today, I'm going to be talking about section five, part two of our text on limits to growth. So make sure as you are watching this that you are following along on the reading guide, section 5.2, limits to growth. It is pages 124 through pages 127. So be sure that you're following along on that and let us get into that reading. Limits to growth. Now that you know a few things about population growth, think again about the sea otter example in the beginning of the previous section. When a sea otter population declines, something has changed the relationship between the birth rate and the death rate, or between the rates of immigration and emigration. For instance, in part of the sea otter's range, the death rate of sea otters is increasing because killer whales are eating the otters. Predation by killer whales creates a situation that reduces the growth of the sea otter population. Limiting factors. Recall from chapter three that the primary productivity of an ecosystem can be reduced when there is an insufficient supply of a particular nutrient. Ecologists call such substances limited nutrients, excuse me, limiting nutrients. A limiting nutrient is an example of a more general ecological concept, a limiting factor. In the concept of populations, a limiting factor is a factor that causes population growth to decrease. Some of the limiting factors that can affect a population are shown in Figure 5.5. Figure 5.5. Many different factors can limit population growth. Some of these factors are shown below. We've got competition, predation, parasitism and disease, drought, and other climate extremes, and human disturbances. The green ones are density independent, and the purple ones are, are density dependent that impact population size. So let's talk more about those. Figure 5.6, the panda is one of the most critically endangered species in the world today. Populations are declining in large part because pandas depend for food on bamboo which grows in certain forests that are limited as a resource because of habitat destruction. A resource base that is limited can also affect the long-term survival of a species. As shown in figure 5.6, pandas depend for food on bamboo that grows in certain kinds of temperate forests in China. Since the time that these forests have been cleared for timber and farmland, Panda populations have fallen dramatically and have become isolated in small pockets of remaining forest. Density dependent factors. A limiting factor that depends on population size is called a density dependent limiting factor. Density dependent factors become limiting only when the population density, the number of organisms per unit area, reaches a certain level. These factors operate most strongly when a population is large and dense. They do not affect small scattered populations as greatly. Density dependent limiting factors include competition, predation, parasitism, and disease. Competition. When populations become crowded, organisms compete with one another for food, water, space, sunlight, and other essentials. For example, puffins must compete for limited nesting sites. Competition among members of the same species is a density-dependent limiting factor. The more individuals living in an area, the sooner they will use up the available resources. Likewise, the fewer the number of individuals, the more resources are available to them, and the less likely and, and the less likely they must compete with one another. Competition can also occur between members of different species. This type of competition is a major force behind evolutionary change. When two species compete for the same resources, 
Both species are under pressure to change in ways that decrease their competition. Over time, the species may evolve to occupy separate niches or roles. That is because, as you may recall, no two species can occupy the same niche or niche in the same place at the same time. Figure 5.7 the relationship between moose and wolves on Isle Royale illustrates how predation can affect population growth. In this example, the moose population was also affected by changes in food supply, and the wolf population was also affected by disease. Predation. Populations in nature are often controlled by predation. The regulation of a population by predation takes place within a predator-prey relationship, one of the best known mechanisms of population control. The relationships between sea otters and sea urchins and between sea otters and killer whales are examples of predator-prey interactions that affect population growth. A well-documented example of a predator-prey relationship is the interaction between wolves and moose on Isle Royal, an island in Lake Superior. The graph in figure 5.7 shows how periodic increases in the moose population, the prey, on Isle Royal are quickly followed by increases in the wolf population, the predators. As the wolves prey on the moose, the moose population falls. The decline in the moose population is followed sooner or later by a decline in the wolf population because there is less wolves to feed upon. A decline in the wolf population means that the moose have fewer enemies, so the moose population rises again. This cycle of predator and prey populations can be repeated indefinitely. Parasitism and disease. Parasites can also limit the growth of a population. Parasitic organisms range in size from microscopic disease-causing bacteria to tapeworms, 30 centimeters or more in length. These organisms are similar to predators in many ways. Like predators, parasites take nourishment at the expense of their hosts, often weakening them and causing disease or death. The wasp uh, wasp cocoons in figure 5.8, for example, can weaken or kill many caterpillars. Figure 5.8, this larval sphinx moth has been attacked by a parasitic wasp. The wasp inserted its eggs beneath the moth's skin. After hatching, the wasp larvae fed on their host internally until they appeared as white cocoons on its back. Density independent factors. Density independent limiting factors affect all populations in similar ways, regardless of the population size. Unusual weather, natural disasters, seasonal cycles, and certain human activities, such as damming rivers and clear cutting forests, are all examples of density independent limiting factors. In response to such factors, many species show a characteristic crash in population size. After the crash, the population may soon build up again, or it may stay low for some time. For some species, storms or hurricanes can nearly extinguish a population. For example, thrips, aphids, and other insects that feed on plant buds and leaves might be washed out by a heavy rainstorm. Extremes of cold or hot weather also can take their toll on a population, regardless of the population's density. A severe winter frost, for example, can kill giant saguaro cactuses in the Arizona desert. In some areas, periodic droughts can affect entire populations of vegetation, as shown in figure 5.9. Such events can, in turn, affect the populations of consumers within the food web. Environments are always changing, and most populations can adapt to a certain amount of change. Populations often grow and shrink in response to such changes. Major upsets in an ecosystem, however, 
can lead to long-term declines in certain populations. Human activities have caused some of these major upsets, as you will soon read. Figure 5.9, a drought can result in the abrupt decrease of a population, regardless of its size. Droughts and other natural disasters are density independent limiting factors. All right, so this is the end of section 5.2. Be sure you fill out that reading guide and have a wonderful day, everybody.